guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna plant some spring crops in the vegetable garden. I'm actually not planting as many as I did last year and I am a week later in planting than I was last year. It's different from year to year, depending on the weather. Now last night it got down to 27 degrees, but it looks like the 10 day forecast, there's no temperatures below freezing, but the spring crops are those type of crops that can handle um, quite a bit of cold, even a light frost. Things like carrots, peas, beets, uh, lettuce, spinach, kale, onions, chard, uh, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage. I'm probably forgetting some things. Brussels sprouts, it's not a comprehensive list, but that's those are the most popular things that we plant in our area, anyway, this time of year. I have so many of my uh, raised beds dedicated to flowers right now. I've got ranunculus in two beds and anemones in another. Two of the beds are completely jam-packed full of tulips. I've got um, garlic going already, so I really don't have that much space to grow spring crops this year, which is totally fine because we never go through the amount I normally grow anyway. Um, I'm usually giving it away, which I love to do that, but uh, this spring we're just gonna kind of uh, plant a little bit lighter and fewer varieties. So here's the flat of onions I started from seed inside earlier. We did show that in a video. I planted mostly Walla Wallas and candies, which grow really big, high sugar content onions. They don't store quite as long as some other varieties, but they get big and they're delicious. And I still am using some from last year from our root cellar. You will notice some of the cells are missing because my parents came and got some for their garden already. So I will probably have more to give away at the end of today because there's no way I'm planting this many onions. And then I did plant two cells with the sweet Spanish yellow Utah onions and only one came up. Lame. And then the only other plants I'm actually putting in the ground today are cabbage. So I've got red acre, I think. No, <laughs> Ruby Perfection and Copenhagen Market. Do you remember seeing the picture we posted of one of the Copenhagen Market cabbages from last year? We'll put it on the screen. It was like the type of cabbage I needed to find a fair to enter it in. It was so massive and so perfect. Anyway, there were other varieties to choose from and I'm like, nope, I'm growing this one again. And the rest we're gonna be putting in from seeds. So really, I just wanna do some Orkin sugar pod peas, some Danvers carrots, and then probably some spinach and beets, which I think I've got in here. Yep, we've got golden beets right here, and then spinach right here. Giant noble. We're also gonna be amending the soil with some land and sea compost and starter fertilizer. Uh, I mean, I have to probably fix the drip in some of these beds, but let me give you a little tour of what it looks like right now and what we currently have growing before we start planting and removing some of these older crops. Okay, you'll see that we've already brought in some land and sea compost. We've got it kind of dotted around in here. Um, this bed currently has nothing in it. I'm gonna move this into the chicken coop so I can seed some things for the chickens. And that way it's protected until it grows up enough to where I can remove the whole thing and let the chickens have at it. So we'll probably start that in the next day or two. So this one we've got completely available. Right here we've got our crop of spinach from last fall. I think like we've been using on it. I mean, there's some really nice leaves in here. If you just like can spend the time kind of picking through, but there's also a lot of like this kind of stuff just from the colder nights this winter. So I thought I would just pull this up, give it to the chickens and we'll start fresh. Uh, tulips in that bed, looking amazing. There is lettuce in this bed. Hold on, let me take the cloth off. Look at that gorgeous crop of greens. Can you even believe that? They were just growing away throughout the winter time. They are so pretty. There's spinach and then I think butterhead lettuce in here, butter crunch lettuce. It was worth every bit of effort. You can see the cords coming up into the bed. I buried a soil heat cable in here, which goes several inches below the soil and helps keep the soil a little bit warmer. And I did plant these on November the 5th. And then I put the super hoops over the top with a garden quilt. And um, I did run the soil heat cables for probably all of November and part of December just to get them up and growing. And then, boy, they just took off. And I've been cutting on this lettuce. Like I came in and I cut a huge big portion out on this side and then a huge big portion here. You can kind of see where it's lower. <laughs> I kind of just like reached in and grabbed some, but it's just been growing again. Like it fills back in. It's amazing. In this bed here, we've got uh, three by six worth of garlic. We have this little section available to plant in. In this bed here, 
I planted some curly kale. We've been pulling it out for the chickens. I'll probably pull the rest of it today. Technically, well, maybe I'll leave it. It looks pretty good. I'll probably just clean it up a little bit. So these were planted in the fall as well. And then I planted some onions, some white bunching onions, both from seed and from bulbs. So the seed ones are a little shorter. These are the bulb ones. Um, so technically I could leave those in the ground too. We'll see. In this bed, same story with the garlic, three by six worth, and then this is available for planting. This section of this bed is the hardest, most dense soil of our entire garden, and it doesn't make any sense because I use the same soil mix in all of these beds. So anyway, maybe I'll do some kind of a root crop in here. We'll help break it up a bit. And then in these three beds here, we have ranunculus and anemones. So we just got through planting these not that long ago. We pre-sprouted the corms, and you can see them coming up all over the place. So, so far success. Now I did pull the um, fabric, oh, look at this. <laughs> I pulled the fabric off just before I uh, started this project today. Here's Russell. Just so that we could see, I'll probably put it back on if it's gonna get cooler out. There's another bed of ranunculus. I need to extend the drip in this bed here. They look awesome. And then the anemones are a little slower, but they didn't pre-sprout as well as the ranunculus did. But you can see them starting to come up. They're popping through here and there. And then on this other side, we've got a three by four that just has a few buried treasure strawberries around one side, and then a big old giant hole there I need to fill Oh, I get, with the weed. Awesome. Anyway, I'm gonna fill that up with some compost. This bed also has tulips. They're a little bit further behind the other one. This, this one does stay in the shade for a little bit longer during the day, but you can see them starting to pop through the soil. Yep, they're just like gross tips everywhere. And that's pretty much what we've got going on out here. I mean, there's quite a bit of activity, um, and I think that this is the least amount of space I've had to work with in the spring ever. <laughs> in terms of spring uh, vegetable crops. I mean, there's a lot of other things going on here, which is exciting. I'd like to mix it up too. So for each of these raised beds, I'll be pouring in land and sea compost, biotone starter fertilizer. We like to add in some good nutrition before we plant any new crop. Um, and I've showed that a bunch of times and I don't know what it is, but like the soil in raised beds, it settles. I don't know where it goes, but it like returns down to the earth and it just kind of starts to sink. So I find myself needing to top up my raised beds every once in a while. And so a, a good way or a good method I think is just adding in compost every time you plant and it kind of helps keep that soil level up. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna get after it and then we'll do a tour in the end. I'll show you what it looks like. And then I do wanna start my last batch of inside seeds today too, um, because I, it's on my calendar for today to get my pincushion flowers and my tomatoes started and, and such. So I'd really like to get that done too. So I'm gonna try to bust this project out. Here we go. and show you how I plant these onions after they've been sown so thickly in their tray. So what I do is I pop one of the cells out like this. You can see that honestly I could have done a few 
less seeds or I could have just started them a little bit later so they weren't quite this root bound but they'll be completely fine. All, I think there was 21 onions in one cell and they separate out quite easily. They each have their own little root system and they look pretty wimpy for the first week or two but then they just take off and start growing. Don't even think about it, Russell. Uh-uh. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, so I just start kind of easing it apart with my fingers toward the bottom right there and then after you kind of break that like where the roots are swirling around they're pretty easy so you just kind of gently pull and you can separate them out like that easy easy so out of like two cells i think i've got 40 plus onions i'm gonna have a lot to give away <laughs> bed has something planted in it now and it looks so pretty just to see the fresh green to see things going on see new activity is so exciting I am leaving the cloths out next to all the beds that have the ranunculus anemones and this lettuce just because it's used to being covered if we happen to dip a little colder than I think we're gonna be I might run out here and toss those over the top just for a little bit of extra protection but everything else other than the cabbage I'll go get some domes for those but everything else should be fine so let's take a look this first bed the three by four has 54 candy onions let's kind of see how I spaced them there so see what I mean they do look a little bit wimpy in the very beginning but they'll take off and grow here pretty quick of course that next bed has lettuce we got tulips in that other long bed. And then I planted organ sugar pod peas along the base of this A-frame trellis. Um, and it's not technically a climber but or a vining type of pea, but it gets really tall and it does benefit from support. And then I just scattered spinach seeds all the way around the base of it and underneath because it can handle a little bit of shade. And then in this bed here, I left the kale, cleaned it up a little bit, left the green onions. I cut rid of the big ones because when I got to looking at them, they were pretty slimy. Um, so I didn't really want to see what those were gonna do. I think they were on their way to rotting. Anyway, um, here I planted three rows of Danvers half long carrots. And then I planted some golden beets, one row here and the other row on that side there. And then in this bed, you can see my pile of supplies there. This bed, I've got the four Copenhagen Market cabbage. Then of course these three beds here have the ranunculus and anemones. This one has the red cabbage, ruby perfection, and then tulips. And then this last bed has walla walla onions. And I didn't even count, less than the other bed because I was working around some strawberries. And I do have a pot of chives here which I've had here for years. Just comes back beautifully every year. Okay, so now that that project is done, I'm going to run into the greenhouse and we're going to get the rest of my seeds started. I'm super happy that I have time to do that today. All right, we're in the greenhouse now. I've got all of my seed starting stuff, so some trays, uh, my seed starting mix right there. And then this is what we're starting today. So in pincushion flowers, I have five varieties. Uh, there's Snow Maiden, Isaac House Blend, Fama White, Black Beauty, and Summer Berries. Then I've got Mignonette. I've never grown this before, and I've also never grown corn cockle. Florette sent these out, so it'll be fun to try those out. And then I've got three varieties of Feverfew here. We've got Magic Lime Green, Sunny Ball, and Magic Single. And then I've got a whole bunch of varieties of tomatoes. I told myself I wasn't going to plant a whole bunch of tomatoes this year, but I don't know. Maybe I'll grow these and give some of them away. But we've got uh, Black Crim right here. Current Red, which I grow these for cutting. Garden Treasure, Garden Gem, which was the best flavored tomato in my garden last year, pretty much, like it was the, one of the top ones. Uh, Good Hearted, and then we've got Beef Steak, Campari, Husky Cherry, Big Boy, and Black Prince. And as always, I'm just following the instructions on the back of the seed packet. I'm pre-moistening my uh, seed starting mix. I don't use any fertilizer at um, the time of planting. I wait until they get their first set of true leaves. And then I do like a half strength fertilizing, fertilizer, whatever. Anyway, so like the back of this pincushion flower packet says, so four to six weeks before your last frost, which we can get frost into May. 
um, barely cover as light aids germination. So instead of covering these with soil, I'm going to be using vermiculite on top because that still allows light to penetrate to the seed. And then it also helps with moisture levels, especially when you um, all pretty much are surface sowing your seeds. And then I'll just follow the rest of the instructions. So like uh, fever few, do not cover as light age germination. I mean, there's all kinds of information on the backs of these seed packets. And it might seem a little bit late to be starting some of these things, like tomatoes, for example, but it's really not. It's actually healthier for the plant a lot of the time because you're not uh, having to keep these big, lanky plants inside where you may not have proper light and you don't really want them to start blooming when they're still in their cans. You want them to be out in the garden doing that. Um, so it's perfect because I'll have enough time to get these up and growing and they'll be kind of the perfect size to put out in the garden. Um, rather than like last year, I started things way too early and I just had these huge plants. Everything was fine, but I think I would have had a better start had I organized a little bit better. Also, it, it's helpful for grow light space too because right now my sweet peas are just about ready to go outside. So when I move all of those outside, I have like 15 trays of those. I'll have so much room under the grow lights again. So. Um, um, if I can organize to where like one crop's going out into the garden while one is being planted and can go underneath that in that space and utilize it, then it maximizes uh, the grow light space. And then you don't have to, like I was considering getting another grow light this year system and I just don't think I need it if I'm organized. And as you go to, you learn things that are just not worth planting inside like pumpkins and squash and zucchini and cucumbers, those vine crops and watermelon and um, cantaloupe. All of those are so much better off direct seeded. I mean, you definitely can, um, you can, plant those inside and grow them on but I think it's like a for me it's a huge waste of grow light space because there's other things that I would love to start um, that I need to have under grow lights when you can direct seed those other things out in the garden and you have just as strong of a plant although you know it kind of depends on your climate too if you have a really short growing season you may need to start them inside so maybe that statement's not 100% true it is of my area anyway Okay, so I'm gonna get these things planted. Um, I'm gonna be sharing trays with a lot of these. So like, um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 varieties of tomatoes. They're all going in this 24 count tray. So I'll have like two, um, two cells of each variety planted and three of a couple. Well, I got them to all fit into three trays. So this whole tray, which are 72 cells, has all five varieties of the pincushion flower. This one has the three varieties of feverfew and then the corn cockle and mignonette. And then for the tomatoes, I did them in twos. So two of the beefsteak, two of the big boy, and so on and so forth, except for garden gem and garden treasure each got four cells a piece. So these are gonna be heading into the studio. I think this is the last of the seeds starting for me. Um, I'm gonna go back through my seeds, just make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, and you know, I've got a lot going on. So I've got a lot that um, I can put out in the cut flower garden and the regular garden once things start to open up because like once the tulips are done, we'll take those out and we'll have room for some other crops and, and things like that. 
Um, and then I've got a huge list of things to direct seed in May. Um, so my next like big push for seed won't be for almost another month now. But everything has gone really well. I mean, all the all of the seeds have done fantastic. The only thing that I did that was weird was I um, seeded a whole tray of Love in a Puff. I did not pre-soak the seeds, which I probably should have. And, um, you know, several of them came up and I ended up you know, like kind of scooting all of the seedlings to one end of that seed starting tray. And then I thought, well, if nothing's gonna happen in these other cells, I'm just gonna toss some new seeds in. So I put some random stuff in there, like some grass, ornamental grass and, <laughs> and stuff in there. And the grass started to sprout and come up and then all of a sudden here comes the Love in a Puff. So like, <laughs> have two varieties of seed in that tray in several of the cells. So anyway, like be patient, I guess was the lesson with that one. And then my um, flat of pansies never really did much. So I ended up seeding right over the top of that. But everything else has been, been fantastic. The thing I'm most excited to see, well, I'm excited to see a lot of things, but I had excellent germination with my celosia this year, or celosia, I don't know how to say that. Um, and the dahlias from seed, I've never done that before. And those are doing fantastic and they're huge. See, they're huge, they're beautiful. So I am really excited to see how those do out in the garden. And here's my love in a puff slash, what did I grow in here? Bunny tails grass, for crying out loud. <laughs> but here you can see all my sweet peas. I haven't even pinched all of them. Um, like <laughs> that, they're just a mess. Anyway, I'm gonna pinch all of these hopefully this afternoon. Um, so they're pretty much ready to go outside. There's another couple of trays up here that's gonna free up a ton of space over here. And then in these grow lights here, I've got all of these sweet peas pinched. So these are pretty much ready to go and everything else is coming up and looking great. So you guys, that is it for today's video. Super happy to have the garden full of stuff. I love it. I love that garden space. I think maybe because, I mean, I love the cut flower garden too and I love them for different reasons, but the raised bed vegetable garden I love because I can really, I feel like I really can control the soil and the nutrients to the plants. Everything always performs in that space. The only thing that I kind of wish I would have done is I usually plant um, Brussels sprouts, not because I like to eat them, but because they're an aphid attractor. Um, so I might like get some in a pot and that way I don't have to spray. If I plant either calendula or Brussels sprouts in our garden space, they attract all the aphids, keep the aphids away from like my cabbage and everything else in there. Um, and I never really plan to eat that plant. I just use it as a host plant for um, the aphids. Anyway, I just didn't even think about it. But I think I like the size of the vegetable garden. Just having, there's 12 raised beds in there. Um, none of them are massive raised beds. Uh, so it's just a very like easy space to keep kind of under control for the most part. The cut flower garden is a different story, but that is a different feel out there. There's not like the intense formality, not that, our vegetable garden super formal but um you can kind of just toss whatever you want wherever you want out in the cut flower garden it doesn't even matter and i love to have that freedom so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope it was helpful in some way or maybe motivating to get out there and get some spring crops started we will see you in the next video bye